Welcome to table for 92. Element number 12, magnesium. It's number 12 because it has exactly 12 protons within its nucleus. For magnesium, we're cooking up a nice guacamole with roasted pumpkin seeds and homemade tortilla chips, as all of the ingredients are high in magnesium. Magnesium is essential for the human body. It does not self-regulate though, so it must be ingested from foods. According to the National Institute of Health, magnesium is incredibly important for maintaining a healthy body. It is responsible for more than 300 chemical reactions within the body. For an adult man, such as myself, it is recommended that I ingest about 420 milligrams of magnesium a day. Nice. Magnesium is actually like 2.1% of Earth's crust, which is pretty substantial. While magnesium is a metal, it's found in such small amounts, basically dust-sized particles. So, you know, like most of the metals in the periodic table, it's not found in a pure state in nature. Magnesium wasn't even isolated until 1755, and it wasn't until 1831 that any sizable amount was actually produced. So there actually is an increase in hospitalizations for hand lacerations during the Super Bowl, precisely because people, probably a little tipsy, slice their hands trying to get out the pit of the avocado. One cup of avocado has 44 milligrams of magnesium, about 10% of the daily value for an adult male. In science, because it is often a long process of discovery for new things about our universe, it can be hard to prescribe one individual as the sole discoverer. And with the discovery of magnesium, it was really a team effort over generations. First, it was Joseph Black, the Scottish physicist and chemist who, when writing his medical thesis, studied the properties of magnesia alba, a magnesium carbonate, which actually led to his discovery of carbon dioxide and the earliest that anyone showed air was made up of more than one gas. And he just barely mentions that he believed magnesium to be an element. Next, the English Humphrey Davy, absolute legend of a chemist, who in the year 1808 was able to isolate a very small amount of magnesium. The same year, he was able to discover calcium, strontium, and barium, all alkaline earth metals, right down row two of the periodic table. Davy was able to discover these elements with a new process called electrolysis. You know, electrolysis today is probably best known for hair removal, but that was definitely not why it was invented. Electrolysis was only possible because of the invention of the first battery, invented by Alessandro Volta, where the term volt comes from. So Davy was able to pass an electric current through this newly invented battery, along with a little drop of mercury and a bit of the magnesium ore, and was able to refine it down to a very small amount of magnesium, but it was still too impure to be adequately studied. Finally, it was the Frenchman Antoine Bussy who was able to produce actual usable amounts of magnesium by reacting magnesium chloride with potassium in a very, very complicated process that eventually produced magnesium. It still wasn't pure magnesium, but it paved the way for two other French chemists, Henry St. Clair de Ville and H. Caron, to finally produce pure magnesium in 1857. So who really discovered magnesium? Most authors say it was Humphrey Davy because he was able to actually isolate it. Others say it was Joseph Black because he hypothesized it being an element. But you know, I'd have to say it was a hundred year effort by people passionate about finding another unknown part of the universe. You know, another standing on the shoulders of giants moment. Because magnesium is one third less dense than aluminum, it is used as an alloy to strengthen aluminum while making it lighter. So any products that benefit from being more lightweight are important for magnesium. Airplanes, cars, laptops, power tools all have magnesium alloys. Magnesium is also important for fireworks. Along with titanium and zirconium, it is used to create the silvery white colors. Magnesium is found not just in leafy vegetables, but also in nuts, seeds, bananas, avocados, and salmon. And it's actually used to fortify some breakfast cereals. Pumpkin seeds have a very high amount of magnesium. One ounce has 150 milligrams of magnesium. And it just so happens, pumpkin seeds go great with guacamole. Every human on Earth has about 20 grams magnesium in their bodies, mostly found in the muscles and bones. Magnesium has a lot of functions in the human body to ensure the heart, bones, muscles, and nerves operate correctly. But a lot of magnesium is lost processing and refining foods, leading to magnesium deficiency. And that's one of the many problems with the ultra-processed foods that dominate modern society. Magnesium deficiency is considered a public health crisis. Our hunter-gatherer ancestors that lived before agriculture and farming 
farming, we're getting like 600 milligrams of magnesium daily. Today, most people aren't getting anywhere near that. More than half of Americans are getting less than half of the daily recommended amount. Like I said before, the average adult male should be getting 420 milligrams of magnesium daily. Nice. I'm not saying we should all go back to the hunter-gatherer lifestyle or that everyone should do the paleo diet or anything like that. Yeah, I'm certainly not gonna say that. I want my hot Cheetos at Netflix every once in a while. And yeah, I'm not trying to be preachy or anything. I'm saying what pretty much any nutritionist would say today. Like our diets are not as nutritious as they were when we were hunter-gatherers and that ultra-processed foods lose a lot of their nutrition, which magnesium intake highlights perfectly. Thanks for watching. See you next time. So yeah, please like and subscribe. It's how I validate my existence.